Hello, and welcome to iFix Old Stuff. Today I'm going to show you how to make a super cheap signal generator for testing and troubleshooting musical instrument amplifiers using parts you may already have around your house. Let's get started. When trying to find a fault on an amplifier, you need to put a signal through the amp for tracing or troubleshooting. Often you will see one of these devices on a test bench. It's a signal generator that creates different waveforms, with the frequency and volume, or amplitude, being continuously variable. When working on an amplifier that is hooked up to a speaker on the bench, the sound of a continuous sine wave can get on one's nerves very quickly. So here's a method I use. I've been using this method for decades and it works great. No flash fires so far. The first thing you need for this project is something that can play music, and that has a 1 8 inch headphone output and a volume control. I often use this older iPad. Or a laptop will work. This old MP3 player would work just fine. Or, if you want to be completely retro, this old Walkman would work. Just make sure you use a tape from the 80s for authenticity. If you want to use a newer iPhone or iPad, you will need the lightning port to 1 8 inch headphone adapter. However, newer headphones for the iPhone are tip, ring, ring sleeve to allow connectivity for the microphone. We need only tip ring sleeve for this application. So you'll need one of these adapters as well. See my video on input and output jacks for more info on this topic. The key thing to remember here is that the headphone out on your device is stereo. However, most instrument amplifiers are mono. We must not arbitrarily join the left and right sides together. This is called a Y connection. This can cause damage to the device. In fact, I've seen iPods actually shut off their output when the left and right sides are connected together without a proper summing circuit. This is in order to protect themselves. The methods we are looking at here will avoid this issue. I've put a link in the description that explains this in much more detail. I'm going to show you three different ways to create the harnesses we need, depending on the parts you have available. The easiest way is to use one of these 1 8 inch to 2 RCA cables. Then, attach an RCA to 1 quarter inch mono adapter to one of the RCA ends. Always start with the volume on your device and amplifier under test at zero. Plug this into your amplifier and bring up the volume. Put on your favorite YouTube channel. The one you are on now is an excellent choice, by the way. Then, slowly bring up the volume on your device. Now, you have a steady signal stream, and you can begin to troubleshoot or test. If you ever tried to play an instrument through an amp and troubleshoot at the same time, I think you'll find this method much easier. Here's a second way. Take a 1 8 inch to 1 8 inch stereo cable and cut off one end. Strip the jacket off and you should see something like this. There will either be a braided shield or a black wire. This will be your ground. You can always verify the connections with the multimeter. The other two wires will be left and right. Pick one, it doesn't matter which. This will be your positive. Solder your ground and positive to a quarter inch mono plug. The remaining wire either tape off or heat shrink. And you're done. Here's another version. This is a good idea if you don't want to cut your 1 8 inch cable. I needed a quick and dirty adapter one day, so I threw this version together out of parts from the junk bin. I added a 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch stereo headphone adapter to my cable. Then, I soldered a quarter inch mono jack to a quarter inch mono plug. As you see here, when you plug the headphone adapter into this jack, it leaves the ring disconnected, which means we're safe. Shielded wire would have been a better choice here, however this was a quick solution and it worked fine for testing. If you don't have any shielded wire, twist the wires together tightly. This will provide some noise reduction. As well, tape up or heat shrink any exposed connections. I've left this one open just for demonstration. So there you go, a super cheap signal generator solution for testing and troubleshooting musical instrument amplifiers. And there are other ways to make these harnesses, and if you have a different solution, please leave your thoughts in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.